record button's a lot harder to find. <laughs> so we sometimes record and not uh, get the audio or anything. So well, that, that's the way to do it. Just talk to Paul. All right. Perfect. Yeah. I like that mentality. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll go ahead and get started. Do you have any questions for us before we get started? Nope. Right no. when you guys are. All right. Perfect. All right. Ready? There we go. All right. Welcome back to the same old stripes. We're joined here today by Chad Forbes. And I'm personally really excited about this kid. Uh, Chad's been one of my favorite follows on Twitter for a long time now. I think he uh, he always gives you a really good idea of what's going on in the NFL and he gives you a different kind of flavor as well. So Chad, with that being said, uh, why don't you tell the people uh, a little bit about yourself, how to find you on Twitter and uh, wherever else you want to plug. Sure. It's the NFL draft fights on Twitter and, uh, I come with a little bit of hot take, but then some really detailed analysis of like free agency, the draft, salary cap, and try to cater to all my audiences. I've had a Twitter account for like a decade now. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and I think that's uh, that's uh, the best thing I like about you is your free agency, free agency takes and your hot takes as well. Um, but uh, I guess to get us started here, why don't you just uh, kind of let our followers know how you got your start and um, how you got into the NFL game. I wouldn't say I just really got to start. It's not really a career for me. It's more a hobby. And, you know, just over time, I've you know, put out more detailed information, mock traps, free agency. But I don't think anybody else does it to the depth that I do. Right. So I kind of use over the cap and spot rack. I try to go through whenever you guys do a mock off season, down to like cuts, extensions. And it's been a lot of fun and generated a little bit of a following that way and gotten kind of in touch with people that are in the agent community, some people on the teams. And, kind of change, exchange information and it's not just like a one-way street where they're telling me stuff but they're also asking my you know stuff which is, is pretty cool yeah and i think um i think the reason you've built such following on twitter is because you you've been pretty accurate with uh some of your takes and uh some of your um i guess uh you know suggestions on where guys are going to end up so um like i said so you've been just remind you when you're wrong but you know <laughs> yeah yeah of course you got to stay humble right you know, like four, like four years ago, I said the Giants were going to draft, uh, I think it was P.J. Hill and Lorenzo Carter, and it ended up happening. I'm like, oh, my gosh, how'd you know that? And it wasn't that I got detailed information from, like, anybody at the team. It's just eventually you spent six or eight or ten, I guess, my entire life studying it. You know what types of players they revolve around and what they like. And so that's really fun. What I love about the mock draft season is sometimes you see, like, a, a team selecting a guy. And like, that's not going to happen. He's not their type. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh that's an that's an insane story about getting BJ Hill, right? Uh considering he's on the Bengals now too. So um love that. So I guess we'll start with uh first question here would be uh if you were in charge of the Bengals, um and you know, let's uh let's not do free agency right away. Um if you were in charge of the Bengals and you were in charge of the extensions, trades, and the draft, um, where would you take this team to to kind of get them over the hump that they've been uh, a little bit stuck on. There's no more exciting team in the NFL right now because it comes with all these like really tough decisions on who to keep, who to let go, how to manage the salary cap. And, you know, the big man that everybody discusses is always T. Higgins. You heard the coach say, go find your own. And I really think that's the way they should go about it. They're going to become a really top-heavy roster with star players. And they're going to have to make tough decisions on their guys, whether it's Devon Bell or, you know, even Mike Hilton's coming up for contract, Deluzier. So, that to me is really the crux of like why I love studying teams and doing all this is because like, you know, yeah, you know, the, the defensive tackle, Peter's a great player. He's 29. He's in the final year of his contract and he's outperformed that thing. Like you couldn't believe it in an anchor there. But like, are you going to give him like, you know, 15 million a year again and, you know, sign in through a 32 season when you got to pay Higgins, Chase, Burrow, Logan Wilson. It, it's fun when you have a team with so much talent and, you know, teams like that, like the Bengals, they're not going to get all excited about free agency it's because you guys already have the talent on your roster. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I like that you bring up uh, Cheeto and, um, you know, you kind of gave a little snapshot on on kind of what you would do on Twitter. You were saying uh, extend like Logan Wilson. And um, I think you might have said a Luzier and then T. Higgins and all that. So uh, uh, my, first step, my first step would be I'd, I'd see if I could get anything for Jonah Williams. Yes. If I get that 12 12- Point seven million off the books and roll with Jackson Carmen, potentially draft another tackle. That would be really interesting to me because that's just money that I can roll forward and presumably use to pay T. Higgins. And then with my free agents, I'd be looking to get the compensatory picks because once you get really top heavy, when you're paying Burrow, you're paying Chase, Logan Wilson, 
Right. T. Higgins. You gotta you gotta have a lot of draft picks flip the zone because you're not gonna have number one. So they gotta prioritize prioritize compensatory picks. And then there's some guys like Von Bell, Hayden Hurst, Sanjay P. Ryan, like you know, Kitty Blackburn in that front office of Tope, and they're not gonna love it, but they're gonna have to be really tough on numbers and say, Sorry, Von Bell, like you outperformed that contract we gave you, we nailed that thing. But like we still view it you as a six million dollar year safety. Like you might want eight and a half, but that's not how we view it. Same with Hayden Hurst and P. Ryan. So it's going to be tough, tough decisions for them. But really, when you have players like Burrow, Higgins, and Chase, those decisions you have to make. Yeah, and I think you're going to make a lot of Bengals fans uh, happy, or you know, the other half pretty mad about the Jonah Williams take. Uh, he's kind of been uh, polarizing <laughs> on Bengals Twitter. Um, you know. Yeah, and I'm, I'm right with you. Position, he didn't look comfortable. He was a really young player coming into the league. He, to me, it looked like a guy that really just hit his stride, and I don't see him losing that left tackle spot. And if you're going to put Jonah Williams there, then you're marginalizing what he did there at the end of the year. And you get two years, and I'm really cheap. If you can save that 12.7 million, everybody's talking. Oh, you can't pay Chase and uh, Higgins and Burrow 30 million. Well, if you roll forward 12 million of cap space, it helps. It's easier to pay those guys. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I think um, I think a lot of people would agree with you with uh, getting rid of Jonah. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll uh, pass you over to my co-host here, Willie. He's uh, he's been quiet for a little bit too long, so yeah, it's you, and you, you got me set up to talk about offensive linemen, which you just know I love talking about. You know I love talking about offensive linemen. I, I don't need to belabor a Jonah Williams point because again, it's been polarizing, and I don't need more people in the comments telling me one thing or another about Jonah Williams. I think one of the really interesting things this offseason, specifically for the Bengals, is the right tackle scenario. I mean, right tackle for a lot of teams isn't a very sexy conversation topic, but Cincinnati's fired up to talk about it. Leo Collins has a torn ACL and didn't look very good this year. There's a not super enticing market for right tackles and tackles in general on the free agent block. Just kind of what, if you are, I mean, to steal T.O.'s thing, put on your Duke Tobin Bengals front office shoes. What's a good solution at right tackler? Maybe it's a combination of solutions. I don't know. What do you think about that position in particular? Because I think a lot of the offseason questions hinge on that one in particular. Right, so you start with, you're going to cut well, Collins. There's no injury guarantee on that contract, right? And what you're looking for is the next Ted Karras, right? You're not going to pay Mike McGlinch or Jawan Taylor. The reason they're getting to free agency is because they're good, not great players. Those are the types of guys that get really overpaid in free agency. Mm -hmm. so you're not going to go 16 or 17 million on one of those guys. You want to shop in the mid tier of the market, unlock kind of a guy with upside. So Jermaine Luminor just he played Mike Tiger for the Bengals this year. He was a team with Karras in both Miami and in New England. You know, if you if you offer him that Karras contract, it's three years, eighteen million. He, he might accept it. And he'd be, I'm not saying he's a solution, but he's got some inside out versatility. So if he turns into your swing tackle, you're only guaranteeing him really, you know, maybe one year or one year, just a little bit into 2024. So that would be really the guy that I would go after. Trey Pitkins from the Chargers is interesting. 25 years, 26 years old, really athletic. And the offensive line coach there seems like he's doing a pretty good job with those types of guys. But you don't want to put yourself in a situation with right tackle where you get towards 28, you say, oh, shoot, we got to reach on Antoine Harris. The one who doesn't sit there. They're, you guys are a pass blocking team, and he's got a ways to go in that regard. And, and then you want to take a guy in the mid rounds to compete with that guy that you're signing, that kind of Ted Karras equivalent for right tackle. Okay, yeah. yeah. Ted Karras equivalent. That's such a great – I haven't heard that yet, but that's a really smart way to put it. I think that's perfect. And we uh, we love Ted Karras here. Um, he's our yeah, absolute right. favorite. So he was phenomenal. They, they gave him uh, the contract at the time. People were surprised. Most most loved the cap contract. He was very good until he got hurt. But Karras, I mean, he walked in there and he wasn't just good. He became the leader of the team, which is like you know really impressive. And, and I think he's going to be a kind of a stalwart in Cincinnati. And years after his career is over, probably on local radio. It seems like really <laughs> that community really came to love him. Yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, more of a. If you play average to above average, you're loved in Cincinnati um, on the offensive line anyways after what we've been through. You know what's great about Karras? There's a lot of guys in the NFL where their primary focus is, I just want to make money, right? I'm going to make money. Yeah. It seems like that's kind of secondary to Karras, which is like really rare, really cares about his like legacy and being a leader and being respected in the locker room. And I just thought what he brought to that to that team was huge. And if that's a Luminor or another option, right tackle, it would be really interesting. 
Yeah, I, I absolutely love that. And Illuminor is another name that um, has kind of surfaced on Bengals Twitter as well. Um, so I guess sticking with the theme here before we dive in a little bit more into the draft, um, what are some other names you might be hearing or um, thinking that would be good fits for the Bengals and free agency? Um, you know, obviously they're not going to swing for the fences with uh, the top guys, but some of those uh, tier two, tier three guys, um, what are some names that you think would be a good fit? Well, they're going to need some help with Will Linebacker. I, mean, I don't really know what they think about Marcus Bailey. There's not much tape on those kind of backup Will Linebackers. But you're not just going to roll with like a rookie or a guy's unproven at Will Linebacker. So that's the strength of the free agency class, right? So they should be able to sign someone there that could come in and give them an impact. I've said that Levante game would be really intriguing there. I don't see them going there. I think he's still the type of guys that get $10, $11 million a year. And if they're going to extend Logan Wilson, they're not going to go to that level price-wise. And where they've really had success in free agency is signing guys that are young and healthy coming off their rookie contract. So, you know, Drew Tranquil makes some sense. Uh, you know, there's a guy in, uh, in New Orleans that his brother's played for the Eagles, a name that saves me. Uh, he, he's, he's a good will linebacker. He's, he's been blocked by Demario Davis in New Orleans, but he can really play every time he gets out on the field. Kate Nellis, that's his name. And uh, there's other guys that are will linebackers. So maybe you got to model that contract with the Mike Hilton, Jovia Wuzier, the Von Bell, where you shop in the mid tier of the market with a guy who's a little bit unproven. You lock in his prime, and then when it's over, you say, okay, thank you very much, much for your service. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's a it's kind of a hidden gem there in New Orleans. Uh, not a name that I've really been familiar with. Um, one more quick one for me, and then I'm going to send you over to Will again. Is uh, me and you talked about this on Twitter a little bit. My uh, my favorite free agent in the class this year is um, um, Amani Ajawari, or however you say his last name. Uh, the Detroit. Oh, yeah, the Do you think there's any chance that he comes to Cincy? <laughs> you know, it's interesting. It's the Patriots don't land one of the big name corners. He probably ends up there. Yeah. He yeah. had a really disappointing season. And a lot of it was that he had extension talks with the team and they didn't really go anywhere. They're talking like nine, ten million dollars a year, like a couple like six, eight months ago. Right. So it's kind of wild that his stock is down to the point where it is. And uh, yeah, he's definitely one of the hidden gems for agency. The guy that I think is gonna be their little hidden gem in for agency where no one's gonna get excited about it, right? But there's a corner in Arizona named Antonio Hamilton that just turned 30, right? So, again, we're looking for irregularities in the market, trying to find a way to get a guy on the cheap who outperforms his contract, right? Right. Nobody picks 30 year old corners. He just had his best season in Arizona, and he's a guy that was under Lou Anarumo in New York. So, that's oh. the kind of guy. He played, he played special teams. I mean, it's like, you know, he could basically be the Trey Flowers replacement. His name's Antonio Hamilton. You could lock him in for like, if you offer him two years, $4 million. He would get like excited because he's kind of like a veteran minimum type player. Right. Okay. That's a nice name. Um, I'll pass you over here to Willie. Oh man, more questions. I don't know. What do I got on my brain? You guys are talking about free agent corners. Um, I don't want to ask about anything about Eli Apple. I think I'm good on that. <laughs> um I, actually, you know what? I think I want to ask you about the draft. That that comes my obviously I actually see you mostly tweeting stuff about the draft. That's where I've seen most of your stuff throughout my time on the internet. Um, obviously the combine's coming up. I'm just curious, is there anyone that you're really curious to see test in terms of how their first round impact is going to shake out? Because obviously it's combine weekend, Bengals fans and pretty much every fan base outside of the top five or six have a relatively good idea or relatively no idea about who they might actually end up with. It's such a weird board. So I'm curious, anyone that you are really looking for to make a stock improvement this weekend? If you see my, my profile, it says I'm always worried about all 32 offensive lines. <laughs> and, you know, the Bengals are obviously, you know, one of the teams I've worried about a lot over the years, of course. So there is a direct correlation between how guys perform offensive line in their short shuttle and their NFL careers. It's, it's pretty remarkable, actually. So I always like to see the guys that skip the short shuttle, right? That They're always the guys that you think have a little bit of tightness in their hips, right? There's a Dewan Jones or Darnell Wright. They'll, they, they won't. They, no one thinks they're going to do well in the short shuttle, but it's always interesting if they do better than you expected. And then if they skip it, you're just like, oh yeah, yeah. He, he his his numbers are so bad. He doesn't want to. See. <laughs> so I love that, and I love I love watching corners run fast. I think it's so funny. We talk about like Devin White or being you know a top five pick. Right. Uh, after the combine, after, corners must run fast, right? They got to run four five. Or, or they got to run under five four five. They got to run like four four to go in the first round. So. 
I always loved the corners running. And then I, I guess if there's one individual guy, I would love to see Anthony Richardson run. Cause you know, yeah, he's kind of an explosive runner on tape, mm-hmm. but he's not necessarily like fast. It's like kind of like a, he's a little more of a segmented runner. So I'd love to see him run a 40. Yeah. I hope he tests. I really hope he runs. I've been thinking about that this week too. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I feel like it's more likely he does it as pro day, but I think for every reason in the book, I would love to see him test in Indianapolis. Yeah, see, the quarterbacks have kind of gotten to the point when where they know they're going to go in the top ten, which he's probably pretty sure he's going to go there. Right. They're kind of like, why do I need to work out? Like, you know, there's nothing that I, it helps me with, unless they're like a. There's some guys work out. It really doesn't make sense for the quarterback, too, but like it certainly helped Justin Fields. So I'd love to see him run. Yeah. So so you're basically saying you think he's a lock for the top 10? Yeah. I don't think he gets past Atlanta at eight. And, I can uh, imagine. Yeah. He's it's a quarterback, man. He's so dynamic. I mean, it's hard to imagine. But here's the dynamic, right? Seattle Seahawks, right? Yeah. Right? You know, so they're going to resign him. You know, Pete Carroll thinks that he's the next Joe Montana. Okay. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. He's very high on Gino. I don't think anybody else is. That's my point. Yeah. Both Gino, yeah. Anthony Richardson, they're a decade apart, both from Miami. I think it'd be really interesting if the Seahawks took him at five and said we're going to give him a year, maybe two, and then I so on. It. That'd be fun. <laughs> you could see it. Fun. You could see it. For let's, sure. let's, let's look at it, right? Pete Carroll had a. I don't know if I curse on this on this podcast, but yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> do what you got to do. Yeah. He had a dog shit roster, and somehow, I mean, he won nine games. So, like, no matter what roster you get Pete Carroll, you're not going to be in the top five again unless somehow you figure out a way to, like, you know, trade DK Metcalf. So, right. they've got it. If they're there and they believe in a guy, whether it's him or CJ Stroud, you know, I get it. They want to, as rusher, Tyree Wilson. You know, he's like Pete Carroll's dream, like, made out of, like, the you know, Pete Carroll designed <laughs> as rusher, it's Tyree Wilson, right? Like, guys got, <laughs> like, longer arms you've ever seen, and he's, like, huge, right? That does feel like a Seahawks. We're only going to be in the top five once. Let's, let's skip the quarterback. Yeah, I kind of like that. Um, I guess sticking on the draft here, uh, kind of a two-part question. If you were the Bengals, where would you go versus where do you think the Bengals will go at 28? Okay, so I would get really excited by guys like Jameer Gibbs. Like imagine in that offense, if you had to hit a check down, mm-hmm. and it was Jameer Gibbs. Other guys, like, sure, the tight ends are interesting if you don't bring back uh, – Hayden Hurst, right? Like those are non-premium positions. They're cheap to fill in for agency. And once you're paying all these guys, it's gonna be really hard to go out and buy the pass rushers, right? Yeah. You're not gonna be able to just go out and get Hendrickson's, right? Mm-hmm. So the guy that I keep coming back to saying in two years, when you know Hendrickson's probably gone, Hubbard's nearing the end of his contract, even the kids from Texas is nearing free agency. Who's the guy that's rushing the quarterback? Like who's the dog off the edge? And the guy from LSU, Ojalari, gets me really excited for the Bengals because he's not like a physical edge setter, but the way that they're going to play is going to be very similar to like the Colts in the 2000s. We're like, we're scoring points and like we need our pass rushers. He's 20 years old. He's got huge upside. He's a great kid. Ojalari is the guy that I really like right now for the Bengals. Okay. And then where do you think the Bengals will go? I think they're going to go with the pass rusher. I hope they do, right? Like, I know it's really like you can get excited nice. about Jameer Gibbs, right? Yeah. B. John Robinson ain't getting there. Yeah. You can get a Zach Charbonneau in the third round. You can re sign, uh, what's his name for pass protection? P. Ryan. You can like, probably get like a Jeff Wilson in free agency for $3 million, right? You can't jump out in free agency in two years and get a pass rusher for $20 million because you're going to be paying all these guys so much money. Right. So you're going to have to develop your pass rushers internally. And they figured out that the end room on defense, oh, wow, we don't really have to take corners. We can even like live with Eli Apple out there, which is just like, I mean, the guy deserves like a raise for letting Eli Apple be confident. <laughs> him and Trey, we want you him and Trey Flowers to be confident to me. It's just like it, it, it bends my mind. But <laughs> you know, you're not going to be able to pay for the pass rushers. So I think you got to get a pass rusher. And Ojolari, you know, he, he's a really explosive player. I like him a lot more than Nolan Smith from Georgia. Yep. I like the guy from Kansas State, but I just think Ojolari, there's something there that's untapped. He's 20 years old, big upside. I feel like I'm kind of hogging you here, but. um. What about a guy like Will McDonald? Where do you see him going? And then um, do, you, do you think he right. gets here's, the first? Here's the thing I've heard about Will McDonald, right? And I'm not here to pull up the kid's spot or anything. Right. But he's like a 24 year old rookie. He's going to turn 25 somewhere through the season, right? And everything you hear about him is like there's maturity questions about like his work ethic, right? Okay. I'm more 
okay with that. I say like it's ideal, right? It never is. But it's like it's okay if the kid's like twenty years old, right? Mm-hmm. But when he's twenty four, it's like a lot different. So I think that McDonald has to answer a lot of questions at the combine. The interview is gonna be very important. He's obviously pretty explosive. But also because he's twenty four, I think his frame's maxed out. Where Ojalar is already bigger and he's twenty. Okay, I like that. Okay. Willie, do you got anything else? No, other than the fact that your boy Will McDonald needs to add some lower body weight and power. <laughs> um, I, I guess my last thing, would you find it, you talk about the edge rush in particular, but how crazy or how not crazy would you find if the Bengals ended up going with more of an interior facing player? I mean, they've definitely been known in the past to uh, draft guys a year early as a replacement. DJ Reader is going to be coming up next season. Mazzy Smith is a guy that was at the top of Bruce Feldman's freaks list to start the last college football season, which, you know, the freaks list is obviously a nice little uh, reference for us as we get in the draft season. But even the guy like uh, Sakaika from Baylor um, or, you know, Kalaja Clancy is trending really high, but even a guy like that, I mean, do you think an interior pass rusher is out of the question or be a bad way to go? Or? I think he's the one that comes to mind. It's very interesting because – He's got some tape where he looks a little bit like Geno Atkins. Okay. And you can't take an offensive t- like Everybody's talking Mozzie Smith, Siaki. I don't like Dervin Dexter. Again, he's 20 years old, so I think there's pass rush upside that you can learn. But you can't take the defensive tackle who's just like a two-down player in the first round. Because ultimately, you know, when I say a two-down player, if you're the Bengal and you're scoring, you know, hopefully the kids wins a game, you're basically going to be in your sub-package pass rushing all the time, right? That's how you're going to play games. So I think a little bit is what's happened there is they've overexposed Hendrickson and Hubbard with so many snaps and haven't had a great rotation. Now, we saw the Texas kid come along, the one that had the tough end of the uh, playoff game. Yeah. You just need to keep flooding the zone with pass rushes. I think their model, really, what they should be studying, and I understand the only one won Super Bowl with the Colts, but if you're Cincinnati, you'll take one. But the oh, Colts yeah. Were when, when they had Freeney, Mathis, and Peyton. Yeah, and you said we'll take one. We'll we'll take one. Uh, if, if we only get one, we'd be very happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh man, I I really don't want to take up any more of your time because you've been super generous. But um, I gotta ask about B. John Robinson, man. He's my yeah. he's my guy. He's my wish at twenty eight. I know he's not gonna be there. But um, wh- where's his floor and where's his ceiling uh, in terms of where he gets drafted? He's going to Philadelphia. At 10? Howie Ross was so smart, right? Yeah. Watch he trades that like New England or Green Bay or somebody, picks up an extra third, right? Yeah. And then he grabs B. John Robinson, okay? And then all of those need the corner and pass rush. He just gets two guys in the third round at that position and says, let them compete. But the idea that they need to go pass rush, like, they're in a win now window. They don't need to be thinking about when Hassan Reddick's contract expires. Like, sure, do they need defensive tackle? Yeah, but they're going to bring back Fletcher Cox and they've got Jordan Davis. Bijan Robbins is gone there. You know, he hired the same agent as uh, Jalen Hurts. And what better way to open up a negotiation than we just took your client and running back a lot higher than people thought? Of. Oh, that makes me so sad. But um, for Philly, I mean, man. I mentioned an offense with, with, with Bijan. I mean, I thought Miles Sanders was the weakest part of the offense. Now, all of a sudden, they have a dynamic running back. He's, yeah. It, it isn't scary. That seems fair. That's scary. It's not fair. That team's going to be an absolute unit. <laughs> right? And I think Howie Ross is smart enough to realize that, like, do I want to – do I need to take – if they play a ton of zone, right, the corners, mm-hmm. do I need to take, like, a zone corner in the first round? Or kind of like I get, like, a Jalen Jones, Eli Ricks, somebody in round three. Like, in round three, do I, what's the difference? Do I want – the kid from Illinois, like, let's assume Christian Gonzalez is gone, right? But I want the kid from Illinois, Weatherspoon, or one of, they're also developmental corners, by the way. They're not finished products. Or do I want the guys that are coming and make a difference right away and then get a couple of developmental corners later? It's like, to me, it's just so obvious the Eagles are going to take John Robbins. If they don't, I'd be shocked. Well, hopefully you are shocked and he falls to 28, but <laughs> I don't see that happening, unfortunately. Um, Chad, I want to thank you so much, man, for coming on, and thank you for taking more time than um, I guess we thought you were going to give us. So um, anything else uh, you have for us, or do you want to plug anything before you jump off here? 
I got one question for you guys. Yes. In the next five years, the Bengals won a Super Bowl. I think so, man. I think I I'll say I'll start, I guess. There's a ton of pressure on the next two two years for them. Um and I think it's a very critical off season for them, but I, I do think it, I think so with, uh, with nine, I think you have a really good chance. What do you think, Willie? Yeah, I think they're going to break through in one of these. I mean, there's so much talent on this roster with, if you're, especially when you look at the windows on some of these guys, they're still early in the Jamar Chase rookie contract. I mean, T Higgins is getting towards the back of that. But they, it just feels like they've got a lot of guys in place for the next two or three seasons. At least I just think that, you know, even if you ask me three years, I think I'd have a hard time saying no. Now, three years is obviously a tougher bet, but five years, I think five years is pretty, I think they're probably, not probably, that's not a fair thing that's for me to say. I think they have a real good shot to win one. So, yes. All right. My, se- my second question. If you give T. Higgins the big extension, right? So, he's extended through 2026. He's over four more years. Mm-hmm. How much is your confidence that you'll win the Super Bowl go up? Go ahead, Will. That's not fair. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, at that point, it just really comes down to what they're going to be able to do with the rest of the roster. Because now we know Kansas City can do it. And I, you know, Brett Veach has been an incredibly good, you know, executive for a long time in this league. Duke Tobin's had really good rosters, and he's had not so good rosters. So uh, I would say I, the one and the five makes me feel more confident. But the one after the T Higgins contract window, that gets pretty tough for me to, you know, really put a staple or, you know, stamp on that. Um, so I don't want to say declaratively no, but I would say a less confident maybe. <laughs> if you'd asked me three months ago about the Bengals doing the draft, right? Yeah. I would have told you to take a look at Jalen Hyatt in the first round. Yes. As you, as you talked about, get the replacement for Higgins. But I've gotten to the point where I'm saying – Higgins is a player. You don't let him leave. Yeah. Yeah. So we're kind of on that train right now, too, where we're debating, um, you know, even taking a, an explosive receiver at 28 because um, Boyd's contract is up and, you know, giving Burrow at least one year of four top receivers is unreal. So, like, if a Jackson Smith is <laughs> oh, um, high at someone like that would be awesome. But um, I guess since you asked us that, uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think 31 teams are screaming, trade T. Higgins, trade T. Higgins. Everybody realizes he's a star. Yep. You don't get rid of star players. There's very few big men that move like him. Mike Williams, like you know, the other Clemson receivers with the Chargers, like he can't even hold like T. Higgins' jockstrap. They're just different players. And Higgins, I mean, and Mike Williams is a star. So T. Higgins is 24 years old. He's going to keep getting better. You extend him. And part of extending him is you can't franchise tag Jesse Bates again. They have the same agent. But, you know, maybe he's the guy you keep. So you would keep Jesse Bates as well? or? Oh, no. I let, I let Bates <laughs> charge the tag on my side. Okay. I'm sure to the agent. He can go to free agency. Yep. I let him walk. And you know what? I'd rather have a Pete Higgins than have Von Bell, Hayden Hurst, and Mike Hilton. Absolutely. Yeah. And you win stars. Sure, the Chiefs did it, but that's because they have the greatest star on the planet in any sport right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know that guy. That whole thing. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. I'd love to talk again later uh, after the draft and recap with you guys. It was fun. Oh, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chad. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Awesome. That was awesome. He's, he's, uh, he's a fun guy.